Greetings, dear friends. Thank you for joining now circle as we gather within the cusp of the new moon. Preparing for the sun passage to the next sign. Thus bringing in the festival of solstice into our, into the energetic mix that we work with uh, at this time. And today we bring together our seeds that we generated through meditation, reflection and sharing within the last couple of weeks since the full moon of Gemini, the festival of Christ, the festival of humanity. And under these energies, we reflect on the topic, love, the magnetizing key to right relationship. This topic is related to the theme of rights relations in all fields of human endeavors that we invoke under the energies of the mutable cross. So let us start our meditative service. And I invite Tracy to sound our statement of purpose. Thank you, Alexander. We come together as a group to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through our group conversations and meditation, which focuses the power of joint intention for the common well being of humanity and Earth's overall planetary life which enables recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity and magnetizes thought forms of solution and supports practical actions that lead to the advancement of humanity. Let us now link together as a group through the naming circle. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance. As we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourself into this circle.
Alexander. This is Alexander Ilchuk calling in from Brooklyn, New York, in the United States. Welcome. Judy. Hello, this is Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts, uh, USA. Welcome. Aneta. Hello, this is Annette Löffler from Denmark. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Jillian. Hello, all. I'm Jillian from U UK, Norfolk. Welcome. John. Hello, this is John Sedevy calling from Herman, Missouri, USA. Welcome. Kathy. Hello, aloha. This is Kathy calling from the Big Island of Hawaii, USA. Welcome. Kiki. Hello, this is Kiki Bill calling from London, England. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, this is Ruth Dittmar calling from Corvallis, Oregon, USA. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align. Forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you. With this new moon, we come to the ending of the higher interlude period, preparing to pass through the gates of cancer, bringing forward into manifestation inspirations and ideas that emerged as a result of our meditative work in the last few months. The topic that focused our work in this last two weeks of distribution of the Gemini full moon brings us to reflection on right relations. And 
we've been reflecting on the questions that uh, Judy offered us to meditate on during the full moon meditation. And we can see them on the screen and also on the community boards. Uh, the link is in the chat. So these are the questions that been in our focus. And I invite us now to open the floor for sharing. Any further impressions that came after these two weeks? And as we share and we listen to each other, let us meditatively recognize the seeds that has the most potential and energy to be placed in the group chalice in our meditation later today to be magnetized and radiated as a way of planting into the mental field of humanity. So we are opening the floor now. Please um, raise your hand and then mute yourself as so you're ready to share. Um, the evidence that I see in the world today of right relations is through all the different charitable organisations that are trying to help, usually are trying to help the underprivileged and animals and basically the downtrodden and they are blocked continuously by people thinking that they've not got enough money or love to uh, help them. So I suppose uh, it's the selfishness that's blocking their progress. Thank you. This is Jill, by the way. Thank you, Joe. This is Lynn. Um, hi, everybody. Um, as I thought about this um, topic, uh, it, it came to me that how, how much power we have to affect all of these things. Um, sort of an overwhelming experience of that. And um, um, so I'm going to talk a couple minutes, but uh, at first, um, I looked in telepathy for some ideas. Well, and of course, Gemini communicating interaction between defined beings. I mean, that all is uh, what this, this month has been about leading to manifestation, um, as Alexander said. And um, um, I started in telepathy. Um, um, here are a couple quotes. All that is, is ever present. We are concerned with the constant awakening to that which eternally is. 
that was um, page 53. On page 54, it might be said that consciousness itself, which is the goal on this planet of all the evolutionary process, is simply the demonstrated result of the science of contact. On page 57, when this evocative spirit is present, the results are inevitable and sure, and the response invoked cannot be stopped. This is the basis of all the success of desire, material or otherwise, aspiration, prayer, and meditation. Always we get in time and space what we invoke, and the knowledge of this fact, scientifically applied, will be one of the great liberating forces for humanity. And I thought, here we are ready to do this work. Um, <clears throat> so um, I, I thought, what is required? Um, right motive, of course. And, uh, and I thought, well, why not try the work out again in a, in a maybe more conscious, directed way than we have? And uh, what came to me in the news yesterday was the plight of the French um, with drought and fires. And it's my experience that uh, we can work with the material side of reality, with right motive, as long as we say that divine will is a predominant factor that must be done regardless of what we ask for, we can still ask and be part of that creation with the material aspect of everything, the Deva kingdom. Uh, we can, again, work right with them. Um, so I thought, what can we do? What can we ask for, for the French and for all of Europe, for that matter, which is supposedly so hot and dry? What can we ask for, and specific, specifically for France? Um, we can ask for rain. We can and and rain on all levels um, of subtlety, um, the actual water itself, the actual release of emotion uh, in a positive way, uh, not holding back, the ask asking for a feeling of giving and taking that would release all these forces, um, not holding things back, but giving and taking and interacting. Um, We can ask for this with, with gentleness, to be given with gentleness and, uh, at and right timing so that the, the water can soak in to uh, the earth. Um, so, you know, maybe a gentle rain at first and then a little more later when the earth is ready to receive more. Um, and I think that's uh, sort of an analogy for the opening of hearts and the acceptance of giving and taking of love um, on another level um, when we can, I guess when we get often, when we get desperate enough with a situation that is difficult for us, humanity as a whole will finally have that cave of the heart crack open and love enter in. Um, we can ask for that sort of enlightenment as well as release from the physical problems um, of needing the rain and of sharing emotion um, of right balance in all things um, between mind and heart and um, between uh, sun and rain we can ask for that right balance with gentleness and love We can connect with the, with the devas and ask them for these things as, as long as we're asking God first or the divine first. We can ask that they work with us on these ideas. And I believe that um, we, ask, we need to ask with a sense of wholeness and sharing. Um, let me see. Ask in, in the sense that we are asking for the emergence of the, of the divine plan, and we want to just be part of that. Um, and again, we're, we're doing 
uh, our job as humanity in helping the other kingdoms by um, asking for the release of the water and the rain. We're helping the earth, we're helping the plants, we're helping the animals, as well as the uh, humans. Um, So we're, we're, we're trying to fulfill our responsibility uh, to the other kingdoms. I believe that the um, Deva kingdom, um, well, I know they want to work with us, but I think they value our ability to create and direct. It's very, very helpful for them as long as we're working in cooperation and not dictating without receptiveness to them. Uh, since we can't truly see the big picture, from all angles, um, we have to leave some room in the, you know, for the divine plan to take over and for right balance. Um, okay, <laughs> that's what came through to me so far today, in the last couple of days. Thanks, everybody. Hello, this is John. Um, I was considering the third question, what does right relations with all that is look like and include? And what came to mind with that was really the going back to monadic consciousness. You know, again, what we all have in common rather than the differences. And if we think of what we have in common, it's at its base level is, um, or I guess you say it's a transcendent level is, is pure essence or spirit. And so when you when you know this and this completely drops in, and you can maintain this consciousness all the time, then I believe you, you live by the golden rule and the golden rule becomes the standard more than the exception. And I think that's when things change. And then that's really the, the definition of right relations, I, I would think. And so it's that idea of, it, it's said that if you, if you could see the monadic consciousness or, or some people call it the I am or spirit, if you could see that level of consciousness and everyone you interact with, then your, monad or i am actually interacts on that of others and draws it forth or elicits them out of out of them as well whether it's a person or a group and then so literally you're raising consciousness by that way just just through your mere attention on such things if you can keep your attention on the on the higher aspect and so i i guess that's what came to mind is it's that idea of it becomes the more that becomes automatic the more you become like a, a quickening agent or a change agent. And I guess if you, if you looked at like the, um, the Christian holy book, it'd be like the leavening of the bread, you know, that perhaps that's what's meant by that. It's kind of that, that, that raising up the new man and, you know, new, new woman, so to speak, and all these other things. And this is when the, the golden age ushers in because people then, it becomes second nature. They realize, well, why would I, if, if we're all the same and we're all made of the same essence, and if I, do harm to another i'm really harming myself it becomes you, it, you just wouldn't do it basically it's it wouldn't even enter into your consciousness and so i i think this is happening and it, it's happening more and more even just since i've been incarn incarnated on this planet i see it happening more and more than past years but it's just a matter of timing and degree and so how fast do we want it to happen and how fast and i think it's just more you know as and it, as individual change agents or, or as groups it's just mainly holding the example and holding that consciousness. And so, you know, it's a very simple, a very simple concept, but then at, at the same time, it's not always easy to implement. And so it's more of a kind of, I think the more we can keep ourselves grounded in that state, then it just becomes, it kind of just ripples throughout all of, all of creation in that way. And everything becomes mirrored back to us in that way. And then others, others start seeing it and, you know, perhaps inquire and then, it sort of spreads and you know if you look at all the religions of the world and all the all the major philosophies they all seem to say the same thing you know it's the same this whole same golden age and this whole you know spirit core aspect or monadic consciousness but they're just different ways of getting there and, and different things and so if you look at that there's that that current underlying all things and it's just people have different ways of thing, seeing it but i think as our consciousness raises those barriers of language um you know as we mentioned in this group telepathy that's the thing you know th that's like a key to kind of breaking through some of those barriers too because then the differences of languages go away and it's just basically 
heart to heart or mind to mind communication, even communication at the solar monadic level where you don't have to use words or even concept or, or pictures. It's just this, that instantaneous knowing and it just sort of becomes the, um, the default way of operating over time. Um, so, so that's what came to me on, on that particular point. Thank you. Hi, um, I think to me, right relations, again, has to do with higher vibrations and frequency. Um, I tend to look at things as energy and frequency and vibration. Um, and I know uh, Dr. David Hawkins uh, in his uh, book, I think it was called Power Versus Force, um, talks about the different um, vibrations and, uh, you know, gave them a measurement uh, to devise a map of human consciousness through frequency. And I think to start for right relations, one of the best things I don't want to say is be happy all the time or at least smile once a day, <laughs> but um, we need to lift ourselves out of um, you know, the lower shame, guilt, apathy, fear, that type of thing, the lower vibration type of things that are really being um, pronounced a lot right now, you know, through our governments, through um, our media and all that. They're, they're really not helping humanity raise their vibrational level. But I think it was Bruce Lipton that said it only takes 1% of the population to affect the whole frequency of the collective. And, um, you know, we have, there's, there are many groups now like us that are out there, the new group of world servers and, and others that are doing good things to help lift the consciousness. And it's to me, right relations is just an automatic um, effect of lifting our vibration to higher vibratory um, frequencies. So um, if we're looking at even being, being neutral, I think they said anything um, 200 or below was the scale that he has. Um, being like despising was 20, guilt was 30, fear was 100. And when you start to get to uh, 200, you're looking at courage, you're looking at heart chakra qualities and above 200, um, 500 being love, but forgiveness, um, you know, acceptance, willingness, and how it affects the population just by one individual that vibrates at a level of 300, for example. It counterbalances supposedly 90,000 individuals that are below level 200. So, to me, the right relations have to do with the vibratory, you know, how we're vibrating and we're counteracting a lot of the negative. 
So I guess I just wanted to put that out there because um, obviously, you know, what defines the level of vibration? Um, number one, motive. Number one. So selflessness, that type of thing, which we've already already talked about. But I guess my bottom line is right relations automatically happens. It's a result. It's not something that um, that we're trying to achieve as a goal. I think it's just a result of increased vibration. So thank you. This is Zanetta. Um, I agree with you, uh, Tracy. I uh, also thought about um, um, how we react uh, to each other. And I'm, I'm reading a book about the inner child, um, the unconscious uh, part of us who is um, reacting um well uh, unconscious uh, and and is standing for 80 to 90% of our reactions to others uh, according to science and i'm thinking about the old um saying from delphi know thyself um if you are more conscious about yourself and about your um, inner child and your inner uh, your unconscious uh, reactions, then your um, relationship with others will be more of the right relationships and not. Um, unconscious uh, reactions uh, about uh, things you're not quite sure why uh, you are saying or doing um, so you more uh, the, the more you you know yourself the more you can uh, be in contact with your soul and can um, Uh, create right relationships. Thank you. So what dropped in after the previous two commenters was this idea of say not necessarily doing but really embodying embodying a quality or embodiment of the one. Um, and so again, so it comes back to like, um, I was thinking of Taoist traditions, you know, they, they talk about like effortless effort. There's this thing. So, so in a way there's, there's doing no thing or, or nothing, which returns you back to the one, which automatically provides right relations because the, the one's going to relate rightly to itself or the, or the one. And the other aspect was this Taoist concept of guarding the one. And it's this idea where the Taoist would remain completely still and calm. And so if you, if you look at like advisors to prominent or, or key positions, um, a, a lot of like, if you read the texts on the, the Great White Brotherhood or the masters, they talk about how they would advise um, certain leaders of humanity to go down a path of, of love and light and that their advice, a lot of times isn't taken and then detrimental things will happen or good things would happen. But these in individuals who would advise would maintain complete stillness and calm because what that does is that allows the monadic consciousness or the, the pure essence to come through. And so I, I was thinking of these two statements, you know, one being effortless effort and the one being guarding the one. And I think that is the key. So in a way it's, in a way it is kind of doing nothing and letting the spirit work through you. And so in a way you you embody that monadic, monadic consciousness and that it interacts with others on itself, but it's not really an effort on our parts, mainly just the effort is kind of staying out of our way. And I, I believe like within the ageless wisdom tradition, it would be like the soul control 
aspect. You know, maybe at a different, at an intermediary level, it discussed between spirit and personality. It's this idea of kind of getting ourselves out of the way as the acting personality or um, lowercase e ego, not the soul or, or ego in that way, but this idea of our personality getting out of the way and then letting the higher forces work through us. And then those forces interact with others, kind of activate, you know, perhaps our heart energy interacts with the hearts of others and then kind of, you know, activates them as well. And then they kind of, and then there's this kind of activation that goes back and forth and among individuals and groups. And so I, you know, that's really what came to mind as I, as I kind of reflected on these comments is it seems to be that kind of that, that stillness and kind of staying out of the way and just allowing things to work through us in a, a calm and peaceful manner. And then that sort of, you know, it just kind of, that's what happens, um, you know, within ourselves, within others and within our environments. And then, you know, the, the planet is at large. Thank you. Hello, this is uh, Kiki. And what everyone is saying is reminding me of a, a quote I read this week in a, by a Naomi Shiab Nye. I don't know her, but here's the quote. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to mail letters and purchase bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere like a shadow or a friend. And it's the kindness, which is what everyone has said, love and the heart. And from there we go and I think, the rest will come in some point. Thank you. This is Lynn again. Um, John, uh, I agree with what you're saying 100% about um, the place we need to be in and come from as we act or exist. Um, but I wonder also what you think about invocation and evocation and their place. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. This is John. Um, it, it's inter interesting you asked that question, Lynn. I, I was literally just as you said that, I, I was thinking of the seventh ray in particular, as I know we, we talked about like that in the Jerusalem meditation and things like that. And I was thinking of this transmutative effect of it in that if you, if you look at that, one can invoke the seventh ray or the seventh ray masters, you know, for, for example, like the, um, the master St. Germain or even the, the master R. And one could, you know, and then you couple that with the divine will of the master Moria, and one could make these evoke of calls to the um, to the masters or the angelic hosts working with them and then bring about the change and then that's like an accelerant right and so you you so in a way the way I've heard it put is that you you call upon your own I am presence first your own inner core yourself and then you call upon the masters and angelic hosts to back up and kind of like a specialization in a way and so if you were if you're wanting to call call for love one would call to like the master Jesus and love and forgiveness in that way, or, or others, you know, if you're, um, you know, if you're going to like the East Kuan Yin for mercy and things like that, depending on what you're wanting to do. And I think that's where the um, invocation comes in. And so, um, you know, you, you'd go ahead and do these things, you know, based on what the effects you're wanting to bring about. So if you're wanting to bring about an actual real, I don't say real, they're all real, but if you're wanting to bring about something in physical manifestation, you may begin with the seventh ray, uh, the, the violet ray, because it's the closest in frequency to the, um, in, in terms of non-physical to the physical plane that will, that will transmute non-physical into physical. But then if you're wanting to bring about intangible qualities prior to that, then you would 
you would step that up. But then I've always heard it's been good to temper that with the divine will or the plan or the Blu-ray of the Master Moria. So then you're not creating karma for yourself or others because you know that the angelic hosts, they say, will carry out your, your commands. And so if you don't, if you don't temper that with the blueprint or the plan, there's a chance you'll create karma for yourself or others unknowingly, which, you know, as, as it's, as it's said in physical manifestation, you know, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And so you're still kind of, you're still on the hook for those things at, at some point. Um, so I, I think that's the key really is that it all kind of plays hand in hand. Right. And so you, you embody the consciousness as others were saying. And so it, the work becomes automatic or under the, it kind of happens under the service surface. Or if you're thinking of like water, right, you have a clear, a clear body of water and then underneath the surface of the water, something's happening. And I think that's what, it, what's happening at the IM or the monadic consciousness level. But then consciously when we're actually creating as individuals or groups, we invoke these, um, these things. And again, I go back to the Jerusalem meditation. That's a very good example because at a subconscious level, we're likely all creating, well, we're always creating all the time, but we're doing it subconsciously. But in that particular group or that instance, you're actually, we're calling into forces and working with the devas consciously and, and, and calling them. And, you know, and then you could do other things too, like obviously with the individual rays, as I've discussed and, and these various aspects here, depending on what you're doing. And then if there's a, a a much higher degree attainment, then you could bring about actual, you know, if you read like the studies of St. Germain and things like that, you could start um, physically transmuting um, the things with a degree of mastery, working in concept, concert with your higher self or soul and the masters and actually precipitating elements of the divine plan in the physical manifestation. And the, um, you know, my, my understanding of that is the latency or the time it takes is, is based on the, um, the octave you're working in basically and so I, I was just reading in a um the texas morning ascended master discourse by saint germain where um i i believe the master's name was shananda as a master on the fifth ray um the the green healing ray that um uh, healing and precipitation and, and abundance and health that's that particular ray but the idea was that as you go up in octaves the 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 time for precipitation is much faster and so one could go up in the higher dimensions, precipitate, and then bring it down in the density. And so basically you go up to higher dimensions, bring it down. And so I think with that, that's where the invocation comes in. You know, in the beginning, it might be, um, you know, again, I was thinking about this in terms of the Jerusalem meditation and that the conversations that were had in that group. And that there's this idea of, well, how do you know whether to ask or to command? And I think that's the same thing with whether, well, how do we know where to keep our hands off or to invoke? And I think a lot of it is command is based on confidence. And so, and so as one gains confidence in the angelic kingdoms and the masters and the rays, and you begin to know what the actual, what they all do and what their purpose is, and then also what the divine will is and the blueprint, and you have a more confidence in that. And then you, I believe that's where kind of the commanding comes into play and the invocation. And you begin saying, okay, uh, and you become more of a, of, of a co-op, um, more of a conscious cooperator with these invisible non-physical forces and then you start seeing the results and so then your faith materializes and it happens faster and faster and then so you become you become more masterful in this way over time because you 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 know the boundaries you know the divine plan and the divine will um and you you know you, you've seen these results happen and you and you know you you have a definite knowing of what the different rays are for and the different things are happening and then so then you just it becomes more second nature. And so if you see something in the world that um, and one could do this now, right, if you're dry, if you're out in the world and you see some injustices or somebody needing assistance, you can call to these individual masters or angels, you know, like Archangel Michael to help somebody or or Kwan Yin for mercy or um, St. Germain to transmute. So if you can't do it yourself yet, um, well, actually, I, I would always call the masters anyway, because it's additional kind of umph behind your own abilities. But then not only that, it kind of corrects any um, any error within your own commands. And so it's kind of like a good check and balance and just kind of makes your work more effective. So I hopefully that was clear, Lynn, but I think that's kind of where the two, the two come hand in hand in my mind, or at least that's what's coming through to me at this point. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy. 
discipleship in the new age. Decay presents by increasing the radiance of your light in the world through love and meditation so that others may turn to you as a beacon of light in the dark night of life, which seems in this century to have descended upon humanity. Seek to love more than you have ever believed was possible so that others frozen and chilled by life circumstance and the present horror of the human existence may turn to you for warmth and comforting. Upon the way, will you intensify your inner life and achieve the power that which will enable you to live simultaneously as an efficient human being and a living, loving soul? It is an establishing of this continuity of dual process, which is your main need at this time. It will lead to fusion, personality coordination, and greatly increased efficiency. Many disciples are not young and they are settled in their habits. They must, however, be disrupted and you must feel no resentment. To those that are standing in a blaze of pain and agony, anxiety and distress, seeing it on every hand and attempting to stand steady in the midst of it's all, I say, that which appears is not always that which truly is. That which rends and disrupts the personality life is frequently the agent of release. If rightly apprehended, that will emerge when the forces of light have penetrated the world darkness. We'll demonstrate the nature of the undying human spirit. To all of you, I say, my love surrounds you and the aura of the ashram of which I am the center stands like a great defending wall around you and around all who are battling for the right. See the battle. Since our loving protection, if you will, you can put yourself in rapport with us. We are not blind or uncaring. We know, however, that there are worse evils than death and pain. Know that this is the hour of humanity's greatest opportunity. And if men can pass triumphantly through this by strengthening their own souls and surmount this very present evil, then evolution of humanity will be hastened beyond all that was believed possible. The quote, along with love, compassion, is the face of altruism. It is a feeling from deep in the heart that you cannot bear other suffering without acting to relieve it. Our primary means as the heart center of the new group of world servers is to use that meditative power of our souls, of spirit, monad, of our integrated fused personalities as one group with one mind and heart and to bring that together and do as Master Moria says that when I think of beauty, I look at the quality of thoughts. Thought is the first presence of manifestation. Where there is thought, there is manifestation. So let us together, united, along with that love, wisdom line, and the dynamic will to good, emulate that in our work and be the right relations that those can look at and choose in the near future as a leadership that is emulating 
that warmth, that compassion that can guide us and be that light unto all the souls as we enter into cancer, when new souls come forth. Thank you, Darcy, and thank you, John. Um, it seems to me that we're um, at this point, um, well, two things. One is that um, as things become more concrete, I think as, as the, we can not only rely on um, uh, masters and saints and so forth, but we can rely on bring it to our own group right here. Uh, we can think of one another and the sort of chalice that we've been building and tap into that energy. Um, also, it seems to me that um, we're overlapping in, in our, we have defined areas that we think about, but at this point we're overlapping into an area that we haven't specifically addressed and that's healing. It seems that we're talking to some extent about about healing. Thanks. Uh, this is Judy. Um, I, I'd like to pick up on uh, what was just said. In some ways, we're looking at the fourth question, what is our role in manifesting right relations as the new group of world servers? Uh, because I think we play a critical role in terms of bringing that force of light to penetrate world darkness, which was a quote that uh, Darcy uh, made. Um, we are the beginnings of that externalization. And besides being uh, in right relations ourselves to the extent that we can, uh, certainly with our souls, with the masters, with the monad, um, and then going horizontally, um, we need to be in a place to bring that light through to support others. We talked about the mutable cross. Uh, and when you look at the bulk of humanity um, that really uh, is not yet uh, at that place to, uh, you know, move in their evolution um, to really um, be connected with their soul. It is bringing through that love to support that connection by radiating. I think that we can, um, you know, utilize um, our collective uh, abilities to uh, support right relations. Uh, I work in a group that's called the Economy of the One Life, and we look at um, the 17 Sustainable Goals, which really are uh, statements of right relationship and um, trying to see evidence of it in the world. And two articles written by Antonio Guterres, who is the uh, president of the General Assembly, and one was to uh, the World Economic Forum and the IMF, and looking at those money institutions and saying that in some ways, they do not have right relations with uh, a lot of the uh, countries of the world. They, they basically are not supporting at the same level uh, some of the smaller nations that need their support the way uh, larger nations uh, are being supported. And so um, he, he came up with six points of looking at reorganizing themselves so that uh, these institutions can really uh, begin to bring more equality to the world. I think it was the country of Philippines. They're paying more money in debt relief than they are putting monies into health for their citizens. I mean, and so when these organizations, I think the WEF looks at bringing uh, debt relief to countries, it's like you really need to stop and reframe things. 
Uh, the other thing, right relations, he wrote uh, quite a bit on uh, the new COP, that's called COP 27, I believe, uh, looking at climate action and how many lobbyists from the oil industries are being heard at some of these meetings. And so they're looking to make sure that uh, when people are at the meetings, uh, their affiliations are uh, really stated up front. If they're an employee of uh, an oil industry, it's stated up front because even though there's good intentions, uh, it really is holding that point of uh, will and love together to make sure that right relations uh, are happening in a way that there's equality. And uh, the other thing, are we ready to change our patterns? Uh, are we ready to consume less? Are we ready to look at capitalism in the face? There's love and then there's the will to love. How much will does it take? Um, so I think all of these pieces are aspects of right relations. And for us to uh, be in a place where we can bring light uh, to uh, bring right relations through into the world, I think uh, that's a really important work. Uh, but I, again, I'm seeing that it is happening. This is John again. Um, you know, Lynn had mentioned healing, and then, the, and then there were the, the comments, you know, after concerning um, a lot of these challenges that the world's facing. And I was thinking, I think it all does stem back to healing. And so again, if you, as an example of say co-creating with the masters, in that if we, in and of ourselves, and each person in the world, let's say at an ideal golden age civilization, everybody's in touch with their their I am or their monadic consciousness. To some, to a large extent, and at that point, everybody, by definition, has wholeness. And so, I think a lot of these problems dissolve, and so you automatically move to a higher octave, and so they literally just go away. And if you look at like creating at the etheric octave, a lot of the, a lot of times, if you make calls to the masters or the archangels, if you look at some of these texts written by the brotherhood, they they use the words cause, effect, record, and memory. And so, if you try to heal at the surface level or physically, like many hospitals or, or Western doctors do that um, it, it, it's, it basically treats a symptom and not the root cause. And again, not to, this isn't to dissuade any of that type of work, because that is necessary too, like for crisis management, so on and so forth. Something needs to be done quickly, and if someone doesn't have those abilities to kind of self-heal. But if you actually heal at the level of cause, effect, record, and memory, at the etheric level, the blueprint level, then it ripples throughout the rest of, it, it physically manifests very quickly. And so there's accounts you could read about people being shot and so on and so forth. And then they, they're, they heal, they're healed instantly and they can go out within 15 minutes and they're up and running. You know, And it, these stories seem almost kind of fake in the beginning, but then when you start seeing them enough, you start seeing accounts of these things all over the place and you know people being healed from these diseases instantly and so on and so forth. But all of these are, now herein comes the part of co-creation with the masters. So this is the green ray activity, all of these things. The master Hilarion, which I believe was a um, the, the master who is an embodiment of Paul, the Apostle Paul, if my memory serves me correctly. But there's there's this idea that you if you take this green ray, and some texts call it the, the fifth ray, and you move it into these situations, it's it'll bring about money, health, any any type of wholeness that's required, basically. And if you read the text of Saint Germain, they'll make they'll make calls directly to the masters where they have calls where they'll say, okay, I want not only minimal abundance, but times 10, because there is no limitation or lack anywhere in the universe in its default state. And this sounds pie in the sky, but it's not, because what happens is I believe it's on, and I know this from personal experience, it's based on degree of attunement. And so you're the more you're attuned to these masters and their rays the stronger it will become within you and you embody it. And so I think a lot of this, if the ray or say even just people embody, enough people embodying those rays or that attunement with those rays and those masters are in those organizations or places, then it automatically becomes predominant by the green, by, by that green ray, if that's what you're trying to do. And you may want to temp or you'd want to temper it with a blue ray too, because that's Elmoria and the divine blueprint. And so you want to make sure you're creating in that. But if by default, I believe if you're in tune with a master, you're going to be within that blueprint anyway, but good measure anyway. But 
in any case, I think this is a deal because it's been my experience when people are whole, or at least to a degree, they're generally happy. And so if you're if you're healthy, you're happy generally. And if you're if you're financially happy, you're happy. And and when I say abundance, this may not always mean money. So if you talk about debt and debt relief, it may or may not translate to that. But but it, there's no reason why it couldn't because that is a green ray activity. It's just it's literally just even at one level precipitating local currency or whatever. If somebody has a much higher degree of attainment and along that line. But it could be in the form of other ways where everybody's material needs are taken care of, food, shelter, water, um, may or may not even need to be employment because that if you're really working with the green ray, it just doesn't matter. It, it will just it will just show up. And others may or may not have experienced this, but I've experienced this working with the green ray is that things will show up in unusual ways that may or may not happen within the the societal constructs basically or the economic system but they still arrive regardless it's just in the most economic or not economic the most expeditious way possible that's in alignment with the energies of that given master so i think that's where the this again this is a good example because this is where the co-creative comes in right it's calls to the masters calls to the angelics our own i am presence or monadic consciousness calls to fix these things and you know somebody mentioned earlier and I, i've read the same statistic one one person embodying love offsets 90,000 that do not. And so it doesn't take too much. And then if you look at the law of squares, if you read about that, some of the teachings of the, the masters talk about this is that the squaring effect. So one person in meditation has the effect of one, two has the effect of two meditating in the same or giving decrees to the masters has the effect of four, four times four would be 16, so on and so forth. And you can see how that number quickly grows over time. And so if you did that alone, but that's not even mentioning the people who have studied these things and have a degree of mastery who can actually bring real, I don't say it's all real, but it takes time to manifest in that way. But if you have people who, the more who are embody that, embody this, these qualities in these groups, you're actually serving as, um, I, I'd use like electrical theory, theory like electrodes are, are holding the balance in a way in that particular organization or group or part of that country. And then the light's pouring through you and it just sort of, that energy, kind of like what we're doing with these meditations, right? We, we ground the energies and then it kind of permeates our environments and our, our geographical locales and then globally. And so I think this is how eventually the the tide turns quickly. And this is how we co-create. You know, we, we do it individually first at the I am level unconsciously. We, we study the teachings, we meet in this way and we do this where it becomes second nature. But then in our waking hours and when opportunities permit, we co-create with other groups or others within the group or other groups or or just on our own as we see things that need to be done, we point the the masters and the angelics to that direction because my understanding of this is they have to, because they reside in another octave, that they cannot interfere because it violates free will unless somebody asks. So the more somebody asks, the more it will happen. And then the more people that ask, it happens with greater power. But then not only that, but the degree that you've attained monadic consciousness, I believe that serves as an amplifier too. Or I've experienced this as well, is that if you look at your work, if you've done this work with the masters, if you work, if you look at one year versus the preceding, um, let's use the seventh ray violet flame as an example. You could use that and actually, um, you know, it might have taken you two hours of violet flame to resolve a certain issue. But if you've kept on that momentum on the seventh ray, the next year it only only may take you an hour because you've uh, you've gotten rid of more, much much more karma and you 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 have more you become more I am and more monadic than you do personality or even soul consciousness at that point. So that so all these things serve as force multipliers. And so I think this is the way we individually make a difference and then we co-create. And then these these issues they become um, to use like a seventh ray analogy they become deconstructed or dissolved within the, the universal solvent of the seventh ray. But then also the the healing and the abundance of the fifth ray comes in and it actually um that happens the first ray the divine will comes in to kind of structure it for the plan and then also the the ray of um love wisdom comes in to temper that thing but each of these things by themselves may not say completely do the job but if you do them in concert and and intelligently then that's when kind of the real um things and, and not to say that one couldn't make a difference but it would it, it would definitely help and it would definitely improve matters drastically especially if many were doing it um but i th i think this is where it comes in and then as we do this work we become more master masterful and, and confident and commanding in it and it just becomes more you know when you see it you just make the call instantly and it's just sort of like these these things begin dissolving um, within our eyes so, sounds incredible but i i 
I don't believe it is because I've seen it at even I've seen it at, at lesser levels or, or small levels of manifestation. And if these laws hold true, which they do, you know, as above, so below, as within, was and without, it, all all laws operate at all levels. So it, it has to it has to be true. It's just a matter of realization at, at some point. Um, thank you. As we proceed with our work, um, I want to ask if uh, those of us who didn't have a chance to share yet would like to contribute before we move to the next stage of our work today. This is Kathy in Hawaii. I am so inspired and, and uh, reassured by the wisdom and knowledge and the dedication of what everyone has said and what they've shown by the fact that they, they've gleaned these very appropriate uh, sharings from the various materials. So I'm incredibly grateful for all of that. And, I, and, and it's been said by others in, in wonderful ways, my answer to the fourth question. Um, and, but, I'll, but I wanted to add my voice and the, the energy and vibration of the, the divas that are with me here in Hawaii Islands uh, to this, to the energy of the inner chalice, to, you know, as a seed, that my, my role in manifesting right relations is to compassionately witness, actually empathetically witness what is impactful to humans, which is often horrific and violent, but to empathically witness this and then be in and and come to the point more and more where my response uh, I'm a first will uh, first ray person and then second ray and fourth ray. Those are my three really active ones. Um, the love wisdom I invite and sometimes I get really graphic um, with certain focuses here in the United States and politics, I ask, invite the fire hoses of the universe to, to that the, the masters, the, uh, to amplify and, and send the love wisdom and with a strong mix of harmony through conflict in all of these directions. And the challenge for me is, and where the healing has to come in is when, is when I get caught in an outrage or whatever, I get caught in some way because of my own wounding. And then that takes me through to that, um, to that healing work. And I work as a shamanic healer and so both with clients and then in my volunteer service work using the same skill set uh, I can manifest you know like uh, I can help directly but I also those skills are needed for me as I get caught when I'm empathetically witnessing and maybe I get too close in and, and I so then I return to that place which is so eloquently described by Uta in the, the Jerusalem work, which I also do. And the wonderful positioning of the econ one economy work of the United Nations I, that I'm also part of, and I'm part of a group for the soul of the nation of America. And I, in all of those, we, we have a, a place that we can work from. And I have to, re you know, so all of those help me gain more and more muscle to be able to to stay in that positioning where my frequency isn't diminished by the empathetic witnessing. But, the, but that witnessing, it provides the channel and it's always my will that, the, uh, that these rays, that the masters, that the evolution of us as monads is served by my witnessing. Uh, and I am incredibly grateful for the support that I have with the very active divas and powers and elementals of the Hawaiian Islands and the benevolence and beauty of, of our of this space that supports this healing. Thank you.
Thank you, friends. And now I invite Judy to lead us in the meditation. Thank you, Alexander. So having shared in fullness, let's take a breath. I would like to offer a quote from Hierarchy, Sloka 105. The word that issues from the heart saturates space. Hence, thoughts that flow in impetuous torrent form a sphere which become a defense against the poisonous gases of the planet. Thoughts become a defensive net for humanity. Only these luminous emanations give the strength to withstand the darkness. Hence, it is so important to stratify space with the words of the heart. They contain light. Thus, humanity is uplifted upon the wings of thought. The evolution is being built. So let us take a few moments in silence as we open our minds to receive and formulate a seed from today's conversation. Allowing a seed to precipitate into a word form or a picture that we can offer from our heart to fill the chalice of space. Mercury through Gemini is there to help to connect higher and lower mind to bring us to the plane of intuition. We will hold these seeds to distribute at the close of our meditation. So let's take the next five to eight minutes and think about a seed that we can offer.
So let us take a breath and feel the glow of coming together as a radiant group heart. And breathing out all that does not serve, we sense an unimpeded flow. The light of soul. And we know fire through our commitment to serve the common good. Let us experience this fire in our heart as we breathe as a united group gathered within the planetary heart of the Logos. Standing in the new moon energies of Gemini, we invoke this primary source of second ray to irradiate our group work for this month. Love is the magnetizing key to right relations. And we consider Gemini specific to its placement on the mutable cross. In esoteric astrology under the heading the cross of the hidden Christ, we read, the mutable cross governs the form or body nature, controls the whole life cycle of the individual soul through the stages of the lower experiences of humanity, the strictly human stages, and the integrating process of personality development until a man can stand forth as an aligned person slowly reorienting himself to a higher vision, a wider vertical and horizontal grasp of reality, and thus become an aspirant. This cross governs the lower triad in manifestation, and it rules the three worlds of human evolution. Further, it states, it might be added that the mutable cross is the conditioning influence in that great planetary center, which we call the human. The mutable cross is the cross of the Holy Spirit, of the third person of the Christian Trinity, as it organizes substance and evokes sensitive response from some substance itself. Let us breathe that in. And the master concludes, the three crosses are in their totality of manifestation related to the three basic energies which brought the solar system into being. They constitute the three major and synthetic expressions of the supernal will, motivated by love and expressed through activity. Upon these crosses, the ability to see the whole, purpose, motive, expression, life, quality, appearance, shifts and changes. Upon the mutable cross, the crucified man sees naught of the picture, he suffers, agonizes, desires, strives, is the apparent victim of circumstances, and is the victim of a veiled vision and an incohate longing. These gradually take shape until he reaches the stage of acquiescence and aspiration. Then he finds himself on the fixed cross and begins to grasp the whole of the purpose of the experience on the mutable cross, as far as humanity is concerned and to realize that there is a hierarchical purpose which can only be grasped by the man who is willing to be crucified upon that cross. He reaches the stage of responsibility, self-awareness, 
and right direction. His orientation is now the spiritual vertical, which involves the inclusive horizontal. Pages 557 to 59. So breathe. If love is the magnetizing key to right relations, which is our focus and keynote, then we need to be love for right relations to occur. Let us stand together as an etheric field within the new group of world service, exuding and radiating Christ consciousness, Christic love. Feel love. Be love. Radiate this magnetic substance to humanity in support of its journey through the mutable cross. Standing in this field, let us now share the seeds and words that, quote, issue from the heart to saturate space and uplift humanity. Whenever you're ready, please unmute yourself and share your seed thought. This is John, um, embody monadic co-creation. Thank you, John. This is Anita. Know thyself. Thank you. Thank you. For love is his dot desire for the whole, and the pursuit of the whole is called love. May forgiveness on the part of all be the keynote at this time. Kindness and patience. Thank you. In awareness of the wholeness in all, for all.
we have signs of hope in our everyday lives and just witnessing the good intentions of those around us. Um, an example would be in a hospital where um, good intentions uh, somehow bring about uh, the magic of the angels doing much of the healing, even when uh, human beings are limited. We now hold a field of elevated vibration, which results in right relations with everyone and everything as we consciously work out the divine plan. Right relations will happen when we know ourselves as soul. Recognize and kindly receive the wounded little one in ourselves and in others so that they, that part may come into wholeness and be in service with the spiritual adults of humanity. Uh, what I read in Diana 2 today came back to me as relevant here. Uh, a master, uh, the master DK saying to one of his disciples that he should think, I stand in restful poise and through that poise I can attract the gifts which I must give. An understanding heart, a quiet mind, myself. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other seeds to offer? So let us take a breath and draw together the seeds in this chalice. Allowing them to vibrate and resonate within the embrace of the light of this group vessel. Standing in the downflow of the new moon energies of Gemini, we seed right relations with all of life, including humanity with its soul. Using our centers, with the support of the Deva of the Seventh Ray, we direct our shared intention to humanity. And with this seeding, we prepare to build a lighted house, utilizing the upcoming energies of the solstice and cancer.
We now seal our work together through this meditation by sounding the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of all. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of all, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, everyone. As we come to our close now, let us gather our hearts together one last time as we affirm, we are one with humanity and all we have is theirs. May we love which we hold with May the love which we hold within our group soul pour forth to them. May the strength which enlivens our group life aid them. May the thoughts and energies we receive reach and encourage them. With love and light and much gratitude to all. Oh, oh, oh.